Well, an average of 24 U.S. veterans die by suicide each day. And the VA says as part of its commitment to treat mental illness in the military, it will begin funding psychedelic research when it comes to treatment. This move is decades in the making, with many shifting from opposition to optimism. After several studies show the significant impact psychedelic drugs are making in patients battling chronic depression and PTSD, which is a serious mental health condition that affects people who've experienced or witnessed a traumatic event. Symptoms can present in nightmares, flashbacks, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, and more. 23% of vets who seek care with the VA report having PTSD at some point in their lives. Now, these aren't the same psychedelic drugs from the 60s. MDMA and psilocybin are microdosed in a clinical setting along with psychotherapy. So let's bring in Juliana Mercer, a retired Marine and the director of public policy for the nonprofit Healing Breakthrough. Juliana, thank you so much for being with us. How significant is it that the VA is now moving in the direction of psychedelic drugs as a form of treatment? This is such a historic event. Uh, it's a culmination of top-down, bottom-up clinicians, leadership at the VA, but also veteran advocates who have been talking about how these treatments outside of the country and underground have changed and saved their lives. And our voices have been heard, and the VA um, is going to start looking at these novel treatments for the healing of post-traumatic stress and other mental health conditions like anxiety and depression. And it really is so interesting, kind of how attitudes have changed. Juliana, do researchers know what is it about these types of drugs that really appears to offer benefits? So I can speak to MDMA as a great example, 70% um, efficacy in eliminating a PTSD diagnosis. And the reason that it does that is because this medication goes in and goes in and turns off the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, essentially your trauma response, which is what somebody in PTSD is experiencing. They're in, they're hyper alert and they're always experiencing a trauma response when triggers um, happen. And so they're not able to not only function, but they're also not able to confront the traumatic events or even get to the root cause of what's causing their post-traumatic stress. So this chemical reaction that happens in the brain turns off that fight or flight and allows you to confront that trauma with the help of a mental health care provider. You know, and Juliana, we're starting to see this shift, but it doesn't mean that uh, everyone agrees with it. Do you think doctors will get on board or is there still maybe kind of a tendency to lean on the more traditional treatments? Yeah, I like what you said earlier, op from opposition to optimism. Um, the science that's behind these substances is undeniable. Uh, the 71% efficacy rate in eliminating a PTSD diagnosis is like nothing we've ever had on the market. Um, and those that don't get completely rid of their PTSD, they have an 88% reduction in symptoms, which means they can now go through therapy and continue to tackle that problem and hopefully are able to completely heal from their PTSD. So not having anything on the market that even comes close to having something that has such high efficacy rate, I believe that our mental health care providers and our doctors are going to see the science and are going to be really excited to be able to start treating um, all populations, but specifically the veteran population who has suffered so greatly from suicide. Yeah, and, and as we said at the top of this, more than 20%, that's more than one in five vets report having PTSD. Within that group, is there a certain type of patient uh, who, who will benefit more from the option or is it across the board? So any, any veteran with post-traumatic stress, um, the studies that were done for the FDA process, uh, the folks that went through the study had a average of 14 years of chronic complex PTSD. If you think about it, an uh, Iraq or Afghanistan veteran have had an average of 14 years of post-traumatic stress if they haven't found a solution. So I think that any veteran with post-traumatic stress is going to be um, a great candidate if they don't have any other mental, or I'm sorry, any other conditions that prevent them from being able to take this medication. Yeah, it certainly seems uh, like it can be a very positive uh, option here. Juliana Mercer, thank you so much for your time.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.